Hey everyone, and welcome to uh, to tonight's webinar. And <coughs> my name is Mark Stevenson. I am the marketing guy from from Cold SE. Um, we were supposed to be here with Don Copeland, but you know Don Don could make it this evening, so you're you're stuck with me. I'm basically going to pantomime and tell you incorrect things about the Avance uh, commercial embroidery machine in just a moment. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to turn over the uh, the camera and the microphone to the uh, to the capable Mark Vila, who is easing his way into the screen. Yes, and slowly. he's going to talk about the the rhinestone system, the brush and bake. And the point of tonight is is a couple of things. First of all, of course, we'd love you to um, to get into the Avance and to get into rhinestones and using the brush and bake system. Um, but really, it's the, it's the combination of those things that will benefit your business the most. And so the point of tonight's webinar is to is to get you up and running, whether or not you have an embroidery machine already and just need to add rhinestones or rhinestones and want to do embroidery, or you're just getting started in the business, which is even better, uh, we're going to teach you some things tonight. We're going to show you a few things that can really help you help you expand your market, sell some some more stuff to the same customers, and uh, and have a profitable business. So um, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is do my standard marketing spiel, which is showing you all the resources that you uh, that you're going to have at your disposal. One thing I'm going to tell you right now is, for example, we just switched over to the computer screen. As we switch back and forth between the camera and the computer screen, uh, you may have a problem. Okay, so um, you may lose video for a few seconds, or you may not see the monitor for a few seconds. Click away, click back, see if that works. There's a little snowflake kind of a thing at the bottom of your screen somewhere in blue. Um, click on that, see if that works. Um, if that does not work, then we probably will not be able to help you, unfortunately. Um, it's a limitation in the software and the, uh, and the whole interweb thing in general. Um, the other thing I'll tell you is you can ask questions anytime. We will answer them um, one and all throughout the webinar, and if we miss any, we will get to those at the end. Okay, so what you're looking at right here is, is custom apparel startups, and that is our Facebook group, which is now over 1,500 members, thanks to all of you. And at the, uh, at the CAS Facebook group, uh, what you get is a lot of great information and a community of people that are just like you. So if you are not on here and uh, talking about the embroidery business or the t-shirt printing business or rhinestones or vinyl or anything like that, I'm right now going to put in your little chat window. I'm going to send the link, and I would love for you to sign up. Be member number 1,515. I promise it will be worth it. Um, the other thing that I would like to talk about today is our CAS podcast. Mark Vila and I, we sit down, uh, we try to sit down once a week and come up with something, some idea that we can communicate to you that will help your business. Now we can't teach you, um, we can't teach you how to embroider on, a, uh, on an internet radio show, uh, we can't t t teach you how to print better, but what we can do is, is share with you uh, some ideas on growing your business. So the last two we did, for example, were knowing your numbers, and that's how much is, is a customer worth through the lifetime of the customer how much does a customer cost to acquire and what you can do to change both those numbers. We also have done customer experience and working on your business instead of in your business. Just a great resource for you guys to, to go to and listen to while you work. And there's a link to that one there. And hopefully all of you got here through CAS webinars. CAS, by the way, is Custom Apparel Startups. And you can see we are in the Avance and Brush and Bake webinar now. And we've got some others that are that are coming up shortly. You can go to the all events calendar and see what's coming up for the rest of this month and into next month as well. And this month is next week's a holiday, so we don't have much hosted yet. Right. But for December, we're gonna have a bunch of stuff. And plus make sure you're on all of our lists. We we have decided we are gonna do these kind of lightning webinars. So where if we have a little bit of time, we're just going to post a webinar. And just kind of do it live. So, like Mark sent out a lot of invitations to his earlier one, just a few hours before the event. So it's important that you guys stay connected to us. Um, I'm also going to point out the YouTube channel here, the Cold Essie Coleman YouTube. We've got almost 700 videos about everything apparel decorating, um, and uh, and I think that's all the resources we've got. Is that does that sound like it, Mark? I think I think you're in a good position right now. Okay, right thanks. If you're at all those places. Uh, you're going to learn. A you lot are, you are, you're hooked in. Definitely, <laughs> definitely hooked in. Um, okay, so. All right, so right behind me, what you see 
is the is the Avance 1501C. And for those of you, how many of you are already in the embroidery business of some kind? Just raise your hand. Uh, Sean, our uh, our much more than a technician, our partner in all of these webinars, is um, is raising his hand um, because he's been in the embroidery business literally forever. So um, all of our guys here have a lot of experience, and he's at the top of that list. Okay, we've got a couple of people that are already in the business. Even though Pam Carrillo did not raise her hand, I know she's in the embroidery business. <laughs> uh, hands up. She hands up. Hands okay, up. that's great. Congratulations. All right, so let me try to get this right so you can see me. Okay, so the, uh, the big deal behind a, a commercial embroidery machine is there are, there are actually quite a few. This is a 15 needle system. The model number is called the 1501C. Um, because the 15 stands for 15 needles, the 1 stands for one head, which is this whole top here, and the C is because it's a compact. Um, so the, the 15 needles is important because that means you can have 15 cones of thread on the machine. As you can see kind of back here, you see a few of them uh, in, on camera right behind the control panel. That means that you can keep all your primary colors that you're going to use all the time. You've got black, white, red, blue, whatever your stable of colors that your customers are going to use. And then you have room for a variety of alternates. You might want to put metallic on there. You might want to put neon thread on there. You can put whatever you would like as long as you stay in that, that kind of poly neon Madeira and Royal Thread family that Coleman and Company carries. So the 15 colors is important because if you go from one job to another, you don't want to take the time to remove one cone of thread, put back another cone of thread, and then re-thread the machine. Um, what else you've got up front here are the, uh, are the tension knobs and the thread break indicators. So if you're coming from the home embroidery world, there are two things that these machines do automatically that your home machine might not. And one is thread break protection. So this little green light will go red if you do break a thread. So you can see it from across the room. You can just come over and, uh, and change out that thread. And it also does color changes automatically. You're not swapping thread at any point. You don't have to do manual color changes. It does it all by itself. Um, now down here, you'll see we've got, you can see there's a, there's a little bit of light on the, uh, on the thing there. And I'll just wave it back and forth, which is very important, especially if you have, you know, these 15 different focal length glasses that I'm wearing right now. Um, but yeah, you can see exactly where it's sewing. And we've got a very small hoop on here. One of the big differences between a commercial and a more consumer machine is, is this. It's, it's the hoop size. How big is the is the biggest hoop size? Twenty one by fourteen. Twenty one by fourteen. Now that's not that's bigger than a regular jacket bag. This is true. So if you are going into the business of doing patches, you could do you know a dozen or more patches depending on the size, um, with one of the Coleman and Company patch kits. Um, you could do a, a large jacket bag. You could embroider on leather. You could do horse blankets. Really gives you the kind of flexibility that you're going to need. You also get. An embroidery table. So um, just like I, I was talking about with the with the larger items, you know, let's say you're doing a Carhartt jacket. Then this actually kind of slides underneath, sits on top of the machine right below the, where the needles are, and that supports the weight of a bigger item. So even if you're doing draperies or tablecloths for weddings or events, things like that, you can definitely do it with the Avance. Now there's a couple of things that the Avance does does a little bit better than everybody else on the market. You just saw the uh, the hoop size, which is huge, and that's a big deal. Um, also, the uh, the fact of that it's so portable is a big deal as well. As you can see, you've got the you've got the legs here. There's some of the older model single head machines actually screwed into the cart, um, so it was kind of a pain to take with you. And there was a separate power box. Well, now you and another person can just lift this up. Put it in the back of a of a uh, of a minivan or a cargo van, and you can take it to events. And it's very quiet. It's very portable. Yeah, I mean, I've had one lady uh, put it in the front seat of her Ford F one fifty. No kidding. So. Okay, so just belt it in if you're going to do that. Exactly. But yeah, you can definitely safety first. It's definitely transportable. So so if Air you want to get into the yeah. uh, if you want to get into the uh, into the fair business, if you want to take it to trade shows, if you want to take it to markets and things like that, which I think we've got a podcast about uh, yeah. doing stuff like that. Um, you can definitely do that with the Avance. Um, so when you go into some of the regular embroidery stores and you take a look at the prosumer machines that have a price tag that's about the same size as the Avance, um, that's one of the things that you need to look at is the, um, the embroidery area, the sewing area, uh, the hoop sizes, and what comes with it. There's probably 
I don't know, six hundred dollars worth of hoops mm -hmm. and supplies that come with the uh, that come with the Avanza. And Mark, you get as he mentioned, you get two of each hoop and right. two of the cap frames, and that's that's production friendly right there. So while this one that like this shirt is sewing out, you're at your table hooping the next one, right. so it's ready to go. And then you pop that one off, you pop it on. So your machine's never quiet. It's never waiting for the hoop to be to be built. Right. And if Don Copeland was here, he would say, if it's not making noise, it's not it's making money. money. Right. So that, that's, that's the idea. That's for you, Don. I had to say that. Yeah, that's for you. Because we are recording this. I'm going to try to make sure that Don Copeland doesn't see it. So the the other thing, uh, the other thing that you should know about the Avance is um, is it's got the best trade up guarantee in the business, and we do this for a reason because um, so much of the business of Coldesi and Coleman and Company, it, our our customers growing and coming back to us. You know, you'll start with a direct garment printer and you'll come back to us for embroidery. You'll start with one embroidery machine and your business grows, which is what we want to have happen. So what we've done on the Avance is. Um, we allow a 100% trade-up value. So the price that you paid for the machine, you will get that back within two years if you upgrade to one of the foreheads. And I'm just going to swivel around and show off the forehead here. Oh, should I get out of the way? Yep. So once you're into commercial production, you can see that's the multi-head, that's the forehead of Ante machine, which is literally going to be four times more productive. So try to uh, try to envision yourself a couple of years down the road, you know, after you've you've established your business, kind of kind of growing and getting so busy that you need to expand. You can add another single head, or you can trade that in for a forehead embroidery machine. Okay. Do we have any questions about the Avance? Later on, I'm actually going to hit the green button and we can watch it embroider. Okay, I've got a question. Let me see. All right. Wow, I'm, I'm large. Does it come with a sample of all of your back backings for the novice embroiderer to be able to try the different backings to see what works in the different fabrics and items being sewn on? Um, actually, I'll let Mark Vila answer sure. that question. Sure. <laughs> uh, so the uh, the it does it doesn't come with every single type of backing because if you take a look at our website colemanandcompany.com there lot. are so many different kinds however it does come with a kit that will get you started a few different kinds a few different sizes and styles it comes with thread and bobbins and needles and all the tools you're going to need to get started and absolutely you will be able to get up and running with what it comes with. It comes with a nice size kit. It really does. Um, there are, you, you're going to get millions and millions of stitches out of what come with it. Now, in addition to that, uh, we set, we have all different types of the backing and embroidery starter kits that some folks will purchase afterwards. Once they get into it and they say, well, I'm going to be doing, that's more customized. So right. I'm going to be doing a lot of this. And we say, well, this is a kit that you would want to purchase for production yep. of that. If you've got a niche market already picked out, then there are definitely tailored supply packages for yeah, you guys. Absolutely. Um, so Amina looks like joined in late. Does the machine come with any software? Yeah, after we talk a little bit about what comes with the brush and bake rhinestone system, then we're going to take a look at the software. And honestly, that's that's one of the things to get most excited about because the same software will allow you to create some fantastic embroidery designs as well as create rhinestone designs. Um, okay, do fast frames or magnetic frames work on this machine? Absolutely, Cindy, they do. And you can talk to uh, Cole Dusty about that. Okay, Pam has a hint um, about, uh, about us selling more supplies. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> we'll definitely try to do that. Um, yeah, Stitch Era Liberty, that's what it comes with. Um, is it Amina? I think it's Amina. I mean, it comes with Stitch Era. Um, and the, the Liberty, and if you get the brush and make system, it comes with hotfix as well. And Sean is actually, and Mark are actually going to show you uh, in just a moment. How are you in, uh, able to embroider the jean pant leg behind you? Sean? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. It's yeah, been up there for a long yeah. time. Well, there, there's a hoop uh, that Coleman and Company sells. Actually, it's oblong. So when you put it's it going on the like machine, this. I, I will, yeah, you can't see me. When you put it on the machine. So it fits the machine this way, but it's lengthwise from front to back. Right. So you just hoop. And the way they did it was they hooped part of the pant leg 
sewed the design, rehooped it higher up, sewed the same design, but just changed some of the colors. Yeah. So, so there you go. It, it's a uh, it's a hooping technique. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, what we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to spin this camera around and put uh, Mark Vila on the spot. I'm ready. There he is. Oh my God. Oh, hello. So we are also here to talk about the brush and bake rhinestone transfer system. And that uses what we see on this table right here. So it uses a, a cutting plotter to actually cut out a block material that will make templates like this. And we're going to get up close and personal with this stuff. In you want to do that? Yeah. We'll do it in a little okay. bit. Yeah, we'll do it in a few. Um, and we're going to get, and so we make templates like this to create transfers. I actually have a transfer right here I can show you handy. A transfer like this. There you go. There you go. And we'll use those transfers to put it on garments like this. Awesome. And this is just Let's a regular a uh, cutting plotter that works for cutting t-shirt materials too. So when you get... <clears throat> Uh, so here's another sample you can take a look. Yep. And the Christmas tree was made with the brush and bake. And then the other things we see on there, that's glitter vinyl material for shirts. So when, if you get the brush and bake and the Avance combo kit, you can do t-shirts. You can do regular t-shirts, I should say, with just regular colors. You can do glitter colors. Then you can do the rhinestone templates and transfers to make rhinestone apparel and yep. hats and t-shirts. And then you can also make rhinestone stickers like right. this. So yeah, let's take a look. So this is an actual decal that you can peel off the back and you can stick it on al almost almost anything. Yeah. And peel off oh. the front too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and stick it on almost anything. I actually had one of those on my uh, on my car for almost a year. And the uh, gentleman that, another gentleman that works here, we made a replacement for his. Okay. That he said after four years, some of the stones started. That was to one of the off. first ones we did. That's one. Um, of the and uh, so we made a replacement for his. So uh, in regards to the next step, do we want to jump on to the software now? I think I think so. I think okay. we'll, I think we'll do that. And Let then me... we'll get up close with this afterwards, and we'll brush some stuff, and and we'll make a little full desi design. All right, and remember, feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, what you're looking at here is uh, a combination software. It's Design Era, and it is a uh, right now. It's a combination between the embroidery software. It's actually got a, uh, a graphic art software uh, built in, a vector art program. It's got an embroidery software called Stitch Era Liberty, and then it's got the Hotfix Era for rhinestones. And it's it's a unique software in the marketplace. Um, it's included with um, Coldesi's embroidery machines, our spangle machines, our cams, rhinestone machines, and also the uh, um, the brush and bake. So uh, you've got a great foundation here to start with one application and do multiple things. Um, what we're going to do now is have Sean uh, come up and talk to you a little bit about the embroidery side of the software. Um, with the software, it does come with 60 pre-digitized fonts uh, that you can do as a straight line, arc, megaphone, um, any kind of shape, uh, wave pattern. It also has true type fonts that, uh, you know, you could use the true type fonts that will convert it to stitches or possibly download from defonts.com or one other website and, you know, add it to your list for specific uh, fonts that the company might have. Um, what I've got on screen is our CD logo. And I'm going to go ahead and digitize the CD logo and add a satin border to it. Uh, simply, once you've got the, the vectored logo on screen, uh, we'd simply just go to our embroidery tab, choose our uh, uniform area, area with pattern. We will go in here and uh, choose our density, uh, whether you want underlay underneath the design, do you want it to trim, um, you know, set all your settings first. Then we want to come over here to where it says auto and choose auto complete. You'll notice you have a little magic wand. You will left click on the first section. You'll see the little running ants going around the image. Simply press enter and it will fill it in. We'll click on the D, do the same thing. And within a matter of seconds, we have the CD logo already done. Now, I, I do want to point out that, that all of our systems here, the, the embroidery systems and the, the software, come with training. So you, you don't have to take notes right now. Um, Sean, Sean's moving pretty fast, but, but you'll know how to do this by the end of training. Right. Um, you want to add a satin border to it. It's simple as 
Just uh, select the design, uh, part of the design you want. Over here in the object inspector area, we go to borderline, choose our fill mode, drop that mini. We're going to do a zigzag, which is a satin stitch. Choose our next one and do the exact same thing. Borderline, none. Drop it down to zigzag. And there's your design, a satin uh, uh, filled design with a satin border. We can come in here and actually separate the border from the design to make it a little bit easier for editing later on. And there we have it. Now at the bottom you can see our color sauce sequence is first color is gold and the salmon, then gold, then salmon. So you do the C, the border, the D, and then the border. The reason you probably want to do it that way is if you just did the C fill, the D fill, you're going to have a lot of play and pull in the fabric. So when you come across and do the satin border, it could be off in certain, in certain areas. So you want to do both sections first. Do the inside, then do the outside. Go to the D inside, and then the outside. Hey, we've got a question, Sean. Um, is that the color? Are those the colors that are going to sew out on the machine? No, the colors here are just the uh, sew-out sequence I chose on the left side, and it's strictly just a visual preference. Uh, you can go into the palette and actually, you know, first color, which is the inside right now, is gold. You want it to be more of a red color. You simply just scroll it down, choose your color wheel. Second color, which is the peach, you want it to be a royal purple. We can then apply it. And now we've got another visual look. Great. Once you're done, you can come up to view and do a simulation and actually see what it's going to look like uh, in those particular colors. You can actually uh, modify those colors here, save it as a JPEG, and email to your customers right. to get their approval, or simply print it out if they're in the shop to get their uh, approval on the color order, uh, the, the, you know, the right colors that they want to sew the design in. That's great. Now, one thing that we didn't mention when we were talking about what comes with the, uh, with the Avance is there are more than 4,000 pieces of basically embroidery clip art. I mean, yeah. they're pre-digitized clip art files that you can pull in and use, use in your business. Yeah, just simply you just import it, maybe add lettering to it, and uh, save it as the DST file and take it to your embroidery machine. So, so Sean, we've seen how to do how to digitize from an object, and, and this could be a logo that someone emails you or, mm -hmm. um, or just provides you with a nice vector file for it. What if I wanted to create some text just from scratch? Uh, it's simply just going back to your embroidery, choosing the lettering. We'll go to the digitized font. We've got Comic Sans here chosen. Uh, you know, if you want to change the font, you simply scroll down, choose the one you want, click OK. Uh, this is our size. Uh, you can have it either bold, italicized, and in the box we will go ahead and type in Tampa, Florida. Press enter. See, it's kind of small, so we'll go back and maybe we'll make this uh, 1.15 uh, inches tall. Looks a little bit better. We want to do it as an arc above the design. We'll come to a range, choose upper arc, and drag it, move it up a little bit. Squeeze in our text. Say, well, it's the same color as the inside. I want to change the color. Just select it, just come over to the left side. And simply just choose another color. Yep. And remember, the colors don't don't matter on screen except for it's just a visual preference, right? And as you can see, the stitches between each letter uh, are jump stitches, which means the machine is going to sew the letter T, jump to the A, jump to the M. Which, if they're far enough apart, you'll have to come back with scissors and trim these stitches out. Software has the option of just selecting it and either adding a trim between letters or words, and it will take the stitches out for you automatically. That's great. So, so what's next? So, if I wanted to output this and, and make it make just the CD, you can get rid of the Tampa. Just put that as a uh, as a left chest logo, right? Simply, once you've got it digitized, we simply just go up to embroidery. You want to choose your start point at the first section, choose your end point at the last section, center the design, and simply just go to File, choose Save, and you want to export embroidery design files. And you just put that on a USB? Put that on a USB stick, take the stick out, put it in the side of the machine, load it up, set your colors according to the cones you have on the machine, and press start, you know, trace it, press start. Okay, great. Well, listen, um, let's turn the camera back on, and let's just get this started so, so people can say that they actually saw one of these machines run. Okay, hang on. Let me turn on the camera. While you're doing that, I think there's, yeah, a question. 
When you change the size of the designer lettering, does it automatically change density and stitch count? Sean? Yes. That's one of the great things about this is like if you just drag the corner and you can actually see the stitch count. Is that nor that's normally down here, right? Yes, it is uh down here at the bottom left shows you there's eight thousand and fifty six stitches. And the size is roughly 3.6 by 4.2. So if I do just, and I'll undo it, if I just scale it down, mm -hmm. it will recalculate the stitches, and now we're at 78, 78, 78. That is correct. Okay. All right. So here we go. We are turning back on the camera, and I'm going to hit start because I'm a marketing guy. I'm qualified to do this. And uh, maybe we can take a look at that other question. And it is a very, very quiet machine. That's the wrong color. So if someone <laughs> had asked, uh, do, do we sell the software separately? And will it work for any other machine? Yes and yes. Uh, we have, I'll provide you a link to the Coleman and Company website uh, where you can take a look at the brush and make and other supplies and stuff. But you can also find the software there. It will export to all of your standard formats. All right. Now, while that sews out, so while that's sewing out, somebody had asked to take another design that was already digitized and change the size and reformat it. Uh, so the, the rules would apply just for any other digitizing software. So the answer is, um, yeah, I think the machine stopped. So the answer is, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, um, you can. But if it's already a DST file, you're not going to go in and automatically resize it and automatically change everything. There's a little more of a, a work required to do that. So, Sean, uh, did you simulate a thread break for us so you can show how it, uh, how it gets? Yeah, actually, let's see. Fixed. Notice what we talked about. See the, um, see the red light over in the corner there that, that you could see from across the shop floor right up here. That is, a, uh, that is a thread break indicator. And we can watch the threading skills. Sean's actually sweating profusely right now. Yeah, it's hard to <laughs> have him in there right there. Camera. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's going to sell out. And you know what? Um, while that does, actually, I think I want to also show off this the fact that we get this question a lot, and that is, can uh, your embroidery machine do a puff embroidery? And yeah, that's that's what we're looking at right there. Is we are looking at 3D puff, and that's a technique and supplies that you can get, and special fonts that you can also get from Coleman and Company to to create that effect. All right. Okay, so now it is, um, we're going to let that go out. We'll show you at the end. Okay, Marco, you're going to have to uh, click away and click back again. All right, um, next up is Mark Vila to talk about the rhinestone side of the software. Yeah, let's go on it. We have, uh, we've digitized this, or uh, let me just, let me check this question before I go too deep into it. Um, does the software convert JPEGs to vector? Yes. And can you digitize it off a of JPEG? Yes, both. Uh, so if you're going to do rhinestones, you'll convert it to a vector because it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Uh, you can also cut vinyl with it if you convert it to a vector. You can auto digitize and you can, uh, similar to what, we had just done beforehand, and we can auto place rhinestones down. So yes, all of the above. You can auto convert all types and work from all types of files. Um, I do it all the time for the in the demonstration. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of a, a, a scenario where we might actually take this design and make it into a rhinestone design too using the same software. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the embroidery. I'm not concerned about that anymore. It didn't go away. It's just we're not concerned about it. That's what this button means. There's, we're not concerned about it. We're concerned about creating this into a rhinestone design. So we'll go to the hotfix. And we'll just choose. Um, these are going to automatically fill within the area. So I'm going to choose an area fill. And it fills it in with stones. Just Perfectly. Perfectly. Uh, right. 
And now I, when I made my design that I'm going to show you, I did size 10 stones. Okay, so they're going to look a little bit like this. And then we'll do the same thing for this other one. And I'm going to choose the same size of stone, same size stone. Now, also what I did was I also created a border around it. So in creating that border, um, I'm going to go in here and, and we're actually going to use the border for two different things. So I'm going to turn the hotfix off for a second. And I'm going to turn the embroidery back on. And then we're going to get rid of the this border. All right, simply uh, what you do is just uh, left click on the purple. Right here? Yep. All right. Oh. oh, there we go. Other there left. There you go. The other, other left. Other left. And then right click and choose delete object. There we go. Go to save the other one on the scene. Left click on it. Right click. Delete object. And now you simply have. Oh, wrong no, one. Grab one. Let me go back. There we go. There you go. And delete object. And you simply have now just All right. Fill so now we just have the fill border. So in this scenario, we're just going to fill and then we're also going to use that rhinestone outline to outline the embroidery as well. So these are two scenarios we're going to create with one design. So maybe the men's polos we're going to do with a stitch border and the women's polos we're going to do a rhinestone border and then maybe some t-shirts we're going to do just rhinestones. So you can see how we're getting into this versatile world where we're using one design and all the different pieces of it. And we might even take the men's t-shirts and take this design and just cut that out in vinyl, maybe in black vinyl right. or blue vinyl. So we've yeah. taken one design, we've used everything that comes with the combo kit of buying the brush and bake and the, the Avance and made what four different Yeah, four actually different you, yeah. you could even do you could even do any one of those options on a cap as well. Yeah, on the cap. So you could yeah, do you them. could do a rhinestone design for the for the women's caps and you could do a vinyl or an embroidery design for the men's. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot there's just a lot of, of cool things that you could do with this software um, and it gets me I just get particularly excited about working with it uh, the more I learn so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this and I'm since I'm gonna do a border I'm gonna do a couple of things okay the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my hotfix for now and I'm just gonna get to my vector area here and I'm going to create a border on here now I remember when I did it I did about a 0.15 and that's just for memory but you could adjust it how you might be. That might be a little bit even too much. I think we shrunk it down, right, Sean? I guess we did. Okay, so I'm going to probably do a 0.10 maybe. And this is a border that we're creating for the rhinestones. And I'll do this one. I'll add a border for this one too. And remember, these we can use this for actual rhinestones, and we can use it in conjunction with the embroidery um, or do a combination of them both. So now I'm going to turn my hotfix back on. And I'm going to show you a couple things. So first, I'm going to grab this. Oh, let me go back. There we go. And I'm going to add rhinestones to this border, like that. And I'm going to choose a different color in the tent. Now, I'm going to get up close. Look, we're on top of each other here. That's not going to work out, right? So what I can actually do is choose this one and adjust it in. So it fits. And as you can see, the rhinestones start to fill in right where we want to be. So that's where I want to be. So at a 22. So I can actually select my other one. And you see right here, this will can just change that to a 22. And that actually changes how far in and out of that vector it's working. And the last thing I need to do is just add the rhinestones for this one. So let me get in here, grab this. There we go. Hot fix path. And I'll make this one that 10. And these here are also these a couple of these are touching, right? But maybe I don't want to redesign this whole thing or move all around because I really like the way it's coming out. I just don't want them on top of each other. You can actually go in here and I can grab these individually and adjust them. So you can adjust them one at a time. You can adjust them as a, as a whole set or however you'd like to be. So there's a lot of easy things to do. And I'll go down here and check these. That'll be fine working for now, but I can also grab these and move them down a little bit. 
just have some better room to work with. Can you add stones? And you can add one stone at a time. So for example, if I wanted <coughs> to add another size 10, you know, within an area here to fill it in further, I could add individual ones. I can you so there's a lot of things you could do in regards to make this design just how you want. And then I get to go move and cut all of this with my cutting machine. So right. I can go a couple different things. I can send the vector file to the cutter. And that's if you wanted to cut vinyl. If I wanted to cut the vinyl. Right. Um, I can cut both of the lines if I was going to do a dual color. Because remember, we just created a border. I can use that border to make a two-color vector design. Right. So I can make it a, a glitter and a solid color. I can make it two, a white background with a black front. So I can cut both of these. I can also cut one at a time uh, through this. If I would have selected one of them, I could hit selected figures and cut one. I can also send this over to the cutter and send my template over. And then also I can I can cut each template out individually. So because I'm going to use two, if I'm going to use two different colors, I'll cut the border. Uh, oh, so actually, what am I doing? There we go. I'll cut this template, which would be the border. Right. Which remember I was using the border for either the outside of the embroidery or, or just more stones, a second color stone in my yeah. rhinestone design. And then here's my inside that I would cut out. So I'm going to make two templates. Yeah. And now I've got all these different cool things going on with two templates that I made that literally took a minute or two to make. So, so, so far, you we, we started with basically a piece of vector artwork in the CD initials. Yep. Um, you could have created something originally if you wanted to. You could have brought in clip art. Uh, we've converted it over into an embroidery design with the Stitcher Liberty digitizing software. Yep. Then Mark Vila took it into just opened up basically the hotfix tab and made both fill and outline embroidery from the same file. I and mean, look at this, we've got the all this on the screen here. And you could um, do that as well. Yep. Yeah. You could actually put the rhinestones right on top of the embroidery file We could have put it right well. on top of the fill stitch, so there's an even a, a third option there. And actually, the image that I started with from the beginning was just a JPEG image, and then right. I converted it over to the vector. Um, so here, uh, can you have a webinar demonstrating digitizing for puffy fonts? Um, that is, no. we are, we are no, talking we can't about, do that, no, we can't, no, <laughs> Sorry. we actually have some cool webinars coming up either at the end of this year, or the beginning of next that are going to be just for puffy fonts about using glitter, vinyl and embroidery together. We yeah. got, that one is, that was pretty is cool. a new cool one that we've got going on. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, new webinars coming up on how to do these cool things with these other products that we have, including our puffy font software and our puff. Yep. It's just time. You see, we have we have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So uh, can I cut the vinyl to make like a faux spangle type of design, cut circles out? Can you do that? Yeah, you absolutely can do that. It's, it's a not, pain, though. It's not my favorite yeah. thing to do. I think that um, that you can do more with how you would cut out the vinyl to give it more of a look that's easier to weed and actually would just look better for the product that it is. Yeah. Um, and then how would you price transfers that are just rhinestones, embroidery, and vinyl? Um, as well as multi-decoration. As well as multi-decoration. You know, Pamela, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the places I would absolutely start from the top and work my way down. You know, because there are not that many co um, companies out there that will um, offer multimedia designs. Right. Um, and, of course, you can't provide a, um, an embroidery transfer. Uh, but you can the rest. So when you're when you're doing mixed designs like that, just think of the largest number that you think your customer will will spend, and start there because they're not going to be able to go to just anyone else. No. And get the and get the same product. Pretty much corner of the market. And, and it's also you start with well, if I embroider this, it's going to be say twenty dollars. Let's make up. I'm just starting with a right. number. I don't know no specific designer, but this it's going to be twenty dollars a piece if I embroider on. I can add a rhinestone border for you might just put a few bucks more on that. Yeah, you might yeah. just say Every four two bucks. Yeah, two bucks, four bucks, depending on how many stones and how much time it takes to make them. Um, but for four dollars more, they can have a rhinestone border. I can have rhinestones filled in it and and both together. Right. Maybe instead of three dollars, it's four dollars. Um, and then the same thing and combine shirts together. We talked about that last time. Where yeah. 
So it, the women's shirts are going to be 25, the men's are going to be 23, the, the children's youth with vinyl are going to be 18. Yep. However, the whole package together is 60 bucks for all of them. Right. Or, and you, you, know, you throw in a free cap or you offer, you offer something in addition. Yep. Okay, so I think we've shown here we would send this over, cut out our template. Yep. So, yes, we have taken the patch kit that we sell, which is a patch material, and put in a rhinestone transfer on top of it. Right. So, so here's, the, here's the question. Coleman & Company has a solution for um, low-volume numbers of patches. Like when I was talking about the, the larger hoops, you know, you can actually use a, a patch material and put a heat seal on the back that someone can heat press or iron directly onto a shirt. You're basically making a patch. So the question was, can you do that with your embroidery machine in a patch kit and then put rhinestones on top of it? Mm -hmm. um, yes, you definitely can. So I think it's time to show your finished embroidery. I, 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 I would like to do that. Okay. And, and here we go. So this is just what we did. And you see it's a simple CD logo. So if you did this, you know, this is kind of the embroidery machine output. And you can also see, of course, the uh, you know all of our embroidery is done on the on the Avance and with Stitch Era Liberty as well. So now you've got you've got a cap with or without 3D puppy foam. You've got an embroidered shirt, and now we're going to talk about uh, talk about the rhinestone side. Yeah. So let's get up let's get up close and personal. Get up close. Yeah. Come okay. on. Okay. I took a shower. Come on in. That's a little creepy. Yeah. I took a shower today. It's it's I'm good. Uh, since we mentioned the patch kit, uh, might as well just show what it is. Yeah, so please do. You would take a design, and you would, just like that, you could have actually done that almost in a patch, but you would sew it onto this patch material, which as you can see, we've created three patches here, and we just we have a special borders that actually help to cut it out. We cut these out with a hot tool that actually uh, uh, melts it away, so we're not actually scissor cutting them, but we're actually melting them away, and we cut those out, and we end up with these patches that you can actually heat apply or sew on to a garment. Yeah. So that's just in someone. It, it's a great product. Yeah, it's because great. Because someone will ask you once you get the Very, very easy. Yeah. Much easier than I, I was so intimidated by it until I actually started using it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is like silly that it's actually a trouble for embroiderers to do patches when it's so easy to do it that yep. way. So let's, let's talk about what we did here. So as you can see, we would have, if we had all night, we would cut it out and show you every single little step right. of this whole process. I, I will, I will go over here, and that is the cutter that comes with That's the brush. That's the cutter. Not, let me actually grab the block material. Yeah. So we we cut out these two. So they gun through the cutter, and they and it actually cuts them out. And as you can see, all the little stencil dots are left behind. Yeah. Each of these took maybe. Uh, two minutes to cut, and that's and that's that's sticky flock. So so it's kind of a, a felt kind of feeling it's like material, like a sticker felt type of material, right. exactly. And it took about maybe two minutes each to cut them out. It doesn't take long. And then afterwards, let me get my little piece of glass here. We just have a piece of glass, and we stuck whatever it didn't. As you saw, some of the dots were there, some kind of stayed in. We stuck it to the glass, ripped it off a couple times, and the rest of the dots stay behind. Right. And we end up with this cool template. Yep. Right so, you, so you end up, right, with, with holes. Basically, it's, just, it's holes in the flock material. It's holes in the flock material. So how do you make the template? Okay. Let's start off with this one right here. Okay. And you can actually just stand it right up straight. Okay. And, and then point tilt down. it down, and it will look really, it'll, it'll show up really nice. Okay. Okay. We can come a little bit. Before. Yeah, I've done this a couple of times. A couple of times. There you go. All right, so we're going to work with this one right here. Yep. And I've got some orange stones. And these are the stones that we sell at Coleman and Company, the crystalline. And we're lit these are 50 gross bags. We're just literally pour it right off. And we have a little flock brush. I feel like we're in a weird area. I, feel I like that. All right. And... We are literally brushing, and soon we will be baking. <laughs> that looks pretty easy. How, uh, do the, how, do the, how do the rhinestones know to land <laughs> face yeah. up? That's, the that's it, the size of the holes just fit. 
exactly the bottom and on the top it rolls right out you have gotten very good at that with practice wow. I, I haven't have done say, it that many times i, don't I, know. Like, I really that haven't even done it that many that times great. Like, oh, um uh, and which is which is fun you know to say like i don't production do this you know you if you get an order for a hundred shirts, right? You will have done more than I have. Yeah, I promise you that. It doesn't take that long to really get a feel for it. I was telling someone else today that what I'm doing is I'm getting some transfer paper, by the way. And transfer um, paper is like scotch tape. Yep, like a big piece of tape. So what I was telling someone earlier today was once you get a feel for it, you can know you can feel when they're in and when they're getting pushed out, and, and it just takes a little bit. So what I'll do is you just roll this right on. And I'm going to leave that there for now because we're going to move on to this next one up here. So I've got some crystals already out. I could probably just push those right into place. And you can also just pour directly from the bag. The more stones, the merrier. The more that you put on, the easier it brushes right into place. And now we've created our second one. So you can see why, how easy it is to say, oh, for, for $3 more. Um, and out, can you really see that they're all in there? They're kind of hard to see in the camera light there, but they're all in. Um, this is why you can see, well, for $3 more, I'll add a, a transfer. Because it's so fast to make that outline transfer. I mean, it took seconds to make. So let me just, it's freaking fast. <laughs> it's not too hard to do. And these are size 10 stones, by the way, um, for people might ask that, which is, uh, they're, they're a couple millimeters wide. Three millimeters? Three, yep. A few. That's not a, a couple, few. that's a few. That's a few. So I'll push those down, make Several. sure they're there. Slowly pick it up. If there was any that didn't come up, I'd push it back down and hit it. And then now we'll go to the second one, because we're just making a rhinestone transfer today. And again, I'll line this up and push that down. Now, as you can see, every once in a while, you might get one that kind of clips or, 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 or doesn't land in the right spot, and you can actually just move it. So you can it'll slide almost right underneath there. And I just I just push it down. There's people that have all techniques like and different methods and and i i just just do it like this get you'll it you'll, you'll it get a method you're it doesn't completely have to, devoted to it doesn't have to look pretty it just has to if you, if work you wouldn't fast. use a shirt you wouldn't have, have to put it back down there we go man that looks great that really looks great and then we'll put that right back on our transfer paper now here is one where i might have um oh, i think i have one that's just a little off and it's easy to actually move them so this looks great so here is a transfer that you can actually sell to somebody that they can iron on, uh, or we can put it right onto a shirt, which we will. Sounds good. So here is a, this is a 14 inch heat press that we got. Mark's gonna put a shirt down for us. Put it on the other side. We'll put it on the other side, okay. I have another shirt, by the way, too. Okay. We can do another Let's shirt. do another shirt. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think people ask, you know, well, how do I put my left chest logo? You know, you can get a little uh, L ruler, um, a square, I believe. It's called a square, but it's not a full square. It's only part of a square. It's it's definitely not called an L ruler. Yeah, it's not called an L ruler. That's it's called not, a square. Uh, that's not I wanted to get that off the bottom. But anyway, if you wanted to just use a regular ruler, um, and there's also hooping tools and all this stuff to do, but a good rule of thumb is four inches down. And I'm um, sorry, seven inches down from the edge. I'm thinking backwards. So seven down from the edge. So I'll put a little notch there with my finger. And this is a great way to get started doing it. And then four from the center. Center, four over. So there's the center of my left chest right there. I recommend getting um, little fabric markers that you put in there and you, and then I think, it comes I think right you off. can buy those at Coleman. We Company. sell those. And then there's the, and I'll put this right in the center yep. of that. And then I'm going to come around because working this heat press from behind is dangerous. <laughs> All right. So safety first. Here, cool safety first. I'm going to make sure that I, that I can actually see it now. I didn't like. You can also lift these up and put them right back down. 
So put it back down nice and straight. And we're going to heat that up. And this 10 seconds is all you need to heat this up to get a permanent bond on this. Um, once it's on, I mean, you can wash it and wear it and wash it and wear it. So I think we're at about, I feel it, I feel that that's 10. I wasn't counting. Uh, now, a little tip that we'll say is like, you can take the shirt and rub it in a bit, help spread the glue around. Um, that only takes a second to do and it actually, it works. Could you, could you use the brush? Is that? You could use, some people will still do this. I have a lot of people that are always grabbing the brush. <laughs> And uh, I use the brush just to brush the stones, and I use my hands for the rest, but uh, I like that. So uh, we wait for this to cool down just a little bit, uh, and I'm going to let it cool down a couple more seconds. What I say is when to, once you're getting to learn it, you can put your hand down. If you see steam, uh, wait a couple more seconds. Right. That's a good rule. So, so uh, we've, we've got a couple of good questions from sure. Pamela. Let's do uh, it. You don't pre-press your shirt to remove moisture. No, Pam, I mean, normally that's a BPG thing. Yes. Yeah, there's really no moisture issues there. Uh, man, that is a that is a great looking design right there. Now, I'll pre I will pre-press it to flatten it sometimes, especially if it's wrinkled, but it's not as critical. So look at that. And I mean, nice. that was created with the with the same software I'm just going to move this out of the way because I'm going to show one other thing while, cool. while you're getting that. That 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 was made with the same software that did that did this, um, and it was made with the same software that did the uh, that did the logo shirt that we just finished. I've got a surprise in store for you, Mark. Okay. What I did was I took this design and made one earlier, okay, and I put it on our hard surface material, which is a sticker material, and it goes on the same way. You put the sticker material here, press it. 10 seconds up, now I've got a sticker, and I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit. A great, a great way to actually apply the stickers, get them a little bit warm, makes them a little more pliable. Now it's just a little warm. That's a pro tip there on the stickers, by the way. You don't have to do it, but if you do do that, it goes on really nice. You'll be a graduate of the Mark Vila be, School. Yes. This is this is Michael Georgievich famous. School right, right here, by the way. He he taught me all this stuff. The on famous these stickers. Michael. We peel the back off. That's just the back of a sticker, right? And we'll put this right onto the center of this notepad. This a, a great add-on, by the way. If you want to throw a sticker like this in a box with a shirt order. And oh yeah, these will work on cars, on cars, on on uh, on glass, gla uh, something like this. You could do yeah. it on. And then I should have looked at where my corner was. Yeah. But we're good. There we go. There we go. And this is, by the way, this is just a transfer paper that was on the top that we put it on before, you remember? But I leave it on to make it easier. This way I can rub these stickers in really well and not scratch out my hands with stone. And now we put Man, a sticker on. Great too. And then go around the <clears throat> edge to get a clean edge. And we've got a sticker. So, Rhinestones so, on so, a notebook. So what do we do? And we, we started with one graphic. One graphic we started yeah. with CD. And what do we do? We we showed you how you can digitize and do a, a cap, mm -hmm. a 3D puff cap. We also showed you how to do a uh, an embroidered logo, right? We also showed you how to do the rhinestone CD and then repurpose that into a rhinestone sticker. We also talked about how all of this will go on a shirt, it'll mm -hmm. go on a cap, It'll go on a bag, it'll go on a blanket, it'll go on a window um, of the car. pants, it'll go on windows of the window of the car. I mean, what you're talking about here is kind of um, this multifaceted business that you can build mm -hmm. just with two pieces of equipment and one piece of software. Yep. So you can do all this with just, I mean, look, I mean, you know, you've got in, in this space or less. You've got the embroidery machine and the cutter and the and the heat press and the software and you're ready to go. And let me show one other thing yeah. that we didn't do here, but I just did it before this. 
So here is some sports apparel. You can use the same software and the same cutter, but you're binding a vinyl material as well. Yep. And here I did kind of a two color with a glitter vinyl for some sports wear, because maybe you're not going to put rhinestones or embroidery on sports shorts like this. That's not typical of that. That's where the vinyl comes in. Same kit that you're buying, you just buy the vinyl material. And here's like a sports shirt that we made. So that uses the same cutter, just a different material rather than the flop going through. So there's even a little bit more step up you can add to that um, using the same equipment that you have. Okay, so uh, we've got a couple of questions. Are these flexible enough to work on the dry wick clothing? Thin, tight, fit, stretch, how durable are they? Uh, if it's this, this is the dry fit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this is, actually. This is. Um, and it's going to last very well. Yeah. I mean, that's and this rhinestones the, or vinyl. Or, yeah. Last well. So of this course, is the, the will last forever. dry star by starter. Yeah. So this yeah. is a dry fit for that. And yeah, though you can put the rhinestones on this as well. Yeah. yeah I love same that. with the, uh, like, say, cheerleaders' outfits or yeah. gymnastics. And you know, it, it's funny. It's one. It's a question that you never, you never get with with embroidery, because literally, embroidery is the only technology that will last as long as your clothing will. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's there. It's, it's there made of the same stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. What size is that room? Uh, Marco wants to know. He likes it. Marco, we will, we will um, make this fit in whatever room you have. Yes. So uh, basically, what you've got is the embroidery machine takes up about three feet cubed. At the most. At the most. So it'll fit in a closet. The uh, the graph tech, I'm going to pan around here to the graph tech. Um, that is about about 20 inches. About so. 20 inches. And then you need a little space to work. So like the uh, the flock table there. And then the heat press is also about 18 inches wide. So pretty much yeah, on a just about table. just about 18 inches wide. So um, one decent sized table in the embroidery machine. And uh, I believe the table that we're working on is 72 wide, inches wide. Yeah. That's the size of this table we're working on. And this is enough enough room to have all of it. That's why we got this size, so we can make yeah. it and uh, and use it. All Marco, time. you've got a 10 by 20, 20 uh, foot workspace. Uh, you could put all this material in there and play ping pong in the room. At yes. the same time. <laughs> You'll have no problem with that space. And all of this uses a standard uh, standard 110 uh, plug, um, so there's no special power requirements. And when you get the bundle deal, it all comes with it. So you get you get the embroidery machine and the hoops, and you get the heat press, and you get the you know the brush and bake system. And uh, you know you may want to upgrade and add some vinyl onto it. Yep. Um, the Stitch Era Liberty and the um, and the other software, the Hotfix Era software, comes with it as well. And it all cleans up easily just for the folks that want to be entertained on how I would clean it up. I just use the same package. We do. It's it's um it's late at night here in uh yes. in Tampa. So it, it's after hours. So <laughs> normally we don't clean this stuff up at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they clean even for the DTT section. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes we do. Um all right, did we forget anything guys? Is there anything else that we need I, to talk I about? I think we covered a lot. Pretty much. Today. I think not only did we cover a lot, but look, I mean, you've got um, the point of this webinar was to kind of introduce you to the idea that with one software package, basically, yeah. uh, an embroidery machine and a cutter from Coleman and Company and Cold um, you, you can do about 19,000 different things to make money, um, and it will, help you, uh, it will help you have and start a better business. So I'm going to take just a few more questions. I have a cutter, embroidery machine. What other prices will? Okay. So William, um, you say you have a cutter and an embroidery machine. What other prices will I need, and what is the cost? Okay. So if you've got a commercial embroidery machine, okay, um, then uh, you can contact Coleman and Company about the uh, Stitch Era Liberty software mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and the hotfix. So you just need that combination of software and whatever supplies that comes with it. Yep. I think we've got something special in here. We do record these uh, webinars, so I don't want to give away anything as far as prices go. You're going to have to email us to find out. <laughs> All right. Um, Pamela is impressed, thinks we did a great job, Mark. Oh, and thank you. She's very surprised that we didn't come to come to uh, Fisticuffs during, uh, during a webinar that we shared the stage in. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's a very accurate, 
um, accurate depiction. Did she there. use the word fisticuffs? She did. Um, she didn't spell it right though. <laughs> okay, what was the name of the software? Um, it is Design Era, technically. Correct. And inside the Design Era suite, there are two parts. There's Stitch Era Liberty, and there's Hotfix Era. And uh, you can go to ColemanCompany.com and learn all about that. And they're sold separate pieces if you just need one. Correct. And there's a combination licenses that you can buy if you need them all. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to switch back over to the screen just because the one website that we did not show off was Coleman and Company. So it's ColemanAndCompany.com, and I'm going to put in the link right here and try to chat that out to everybody. Okay, and uh, the pricing, yes, is on the website. Uh, Janine, for the, for the software, you're just gonna go up to Design Software. Design software funny enough. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, then you've got Embroidery Software and Rhinestone Software. You can kind of dig in from there, and if you want to, give, uh, give Mark Vila a call. Yeah. And um, if you want, if you want combined licensed software where you're going to do it all, um, then definitely call us on that because that's not one you click through and buy. That's right. one Good that point. we help you buy actually online because um, we set up the license specific for you that you've got a multi, uh, basically a multi-use license because it's cheaper than buying <coughs> them individually. Yep. Yeah. Um, Amina, rather than rather than saying a price on the video, what we'll do is uh, we'll have somebody get in touch. I don't know if you've already talked to somebody at Cold Essie, but we will give you the bundle deal with the uh, with the Avance and the Sitch Era software, and then the option to add the brush and bake as well. Okay, all right, guys, um, thanks very much. We really appreciate your time and attention tonight. Um, Leah, yeah, sorry, one more question. Uh, she bought Hotfix. Liber she bought Liberty today, and Hotfix is not included. No, it's not, because that depends on whether or not you're going to hook it up to a plotter or a cutter, like the um, um, like the GraphTech, or if it's a CAMS machine or a Pro Spangle. There's a lot to think about with adding that software. So definitely call and talk. Yeah, just call your sales rep or Coleman and Company, whoever you bought it from. Yep. And if you want to add it, then we will help to get that set up. That's right. All right, that's it for uh, for us guys. Have a good night. Thanks very much for your attention. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you.